You may remember that, at first, it was plutonium and calcium-48, where we saw one alpha decay, then a second alpha decay, and then spontaneous fission. The energy is shown here, and the decay times are shown here. Look here, after obtaining element 114, we have 4 seconds, then 18 seconds, then 13 seconds. These are the times that can be recorded on a watch. And then we move one step upward, and use curium instead of plutonium, resulting in the first alpha decay before we turn off the beam to avoid background noise. And without the beam, and without electrical interference, we see the second decay and the third decay, followed by spontaneous fission, in a favorable environment. It is interesting to compare these decay energies with these decay energies. Are they repeating exactly the same steps, or not? In the first experiment, when irradiating plutonium-244 with calcium-48, we see the first decay and the second decay, followed by spontaneous fission. When we turn to curium, we see that its daughter product falls here. Its granddaughter product falls right here, and then there will be spontaneous fission. I want to point out to you how accurately it repeats these steps when on the way down. The resolution of our apparatus in these experiments for measuring the alpha decay energy is 50 kilo electron volt. The energy we are talking about is 10 mega electron volt. This means with an accuracy of 0.5% in energy, it repeats the steps of the previous decay. When we go to spontaneous vision, we see these energies of the fragments that are here and compare that with what we have on our benchmark, which is the element Nobelium-102, isotope 252. We see that these energies are higher than the energy which indicates that the nucleus, which is being divided here, is heavier than element 102. Of course it is heavier. When this experiment was carried out, the first to react was the American magazine called Scientific American, which devoted its first issue published in the new century in the year 2000 to this event. But let's continue with our experiment and see how these repetitions take place as we move upward. For example, in an even-numbered nucleus, such as element 114, one alpha decay is followed by spontaneous fission. When the nucleus has an odd number, we have one decay, plus a second decay, and only then will there be spontaneous fission. As soon as we go up a step, we can see what happens. Element 116 undergoes one alpha decay, and the second decay will yield element 114, which falls exactly here, as is shown in red, and the third reaction will be spontaneous fission. When we have the long chain of element 116, here it is, it has an odd-numbered nucleus. Its daughter product goes right here. Its granddaughter product falls here, and then there will be spontaneous fission. Look what will happen if we take plutonium-242 instead of plutonium-244. The difference is two neutrons. That is, we move towards a lighter nucleus. This presents an interesting situation since an even-numbered nucleus usually has alpha decay followed by spontaneous fission. Here it is, this alpha decay. And then spontaneous fission happens, and the odd-numbered one has a rather long chain, starting with one alpha decay, then a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth, and then spontaneous fission. Now let's go up the chain, and here it is element 116. Here it decayed into element 114, you see how accurate it is. Here is element 116 with an odd-numbered nucleus. Here it decayed into element 114 and then into element 112. Let's continue even further. Here it decayed into element 108 and then element 106. No matter how long this staircase becomes, the steps remain clearly defined each with an accuracy of 0.5%.
it behaves as it should for correlated decays. Next, we will look at the dependence on energy. For this purpose, we will use two isotopes, plutonium-244 and plutonium-242. We irradiate them with calcium-48, and in the first experiment with plutonium-244, we see three types of decay chains, alpha-alpha spontaneous, alpha spontaneous, and again alpha alpha spontaneous. They are completely different because their energies are different, and the decay times are very different. Now let's change the target. Let's take plutonium-242 and irradiate it with calcium-48. And here we see three types as well, alpha spontaneous, alpha alpha spontaneous. In principle, sometimes a decay gap appears here with a 10% chance of alpha decay taking place instead of spontaneous fission. And finally, the third, alpha spontaneous. These are completely different isotopes because they have different energies and different times. Each of these nuclides has a production cross-section depending on the energy of the compound nucleus. For each of them, you can calculate what this dependence should look like if it is a product of evaporation from a compound nucleus of three, four or five neutrons. This is what three neutron emissions should look like, this is four neutron emissions, and this is five neutron emissions. This is what two neutron emissions should look like, and this should be similar. Now let's pay attention to the fact that these two chains are exactly the same. But one was obtained with plutonium-244, and the other was obtained with plutonium-242. Now let's see where they are located. This is how the 4N reaction behaves. Its maximum is at an energy level of 44.5 plus minus 2 mega electron volt. This is where the 2N is located on the second graph. Its energy is 32.5 mega electron volt. If we remember that it was plutonium 244 and this was plutonium 242, then they are distinguished by two neutrons. And here is the difference in the energies that we have, 44.5 to 32.5, which is exactly the amount of energy that is emitted by two extra neutrons. That is, here we have an isotope as a 4N reaction, and here we have this isotope as a 2N reaction. Let's take a closer look and find out how else they are similar to one another. Well, firstly, these are exactly the same chains. The energies of their decay are practically the same, diverging by only half a percent. But one was obtained with plutonium-244 and the other with plutonium-242. It is clear that the plutonium-244 chain has a very high energy level, a 5N reaction, while plutonium-242 is a 3N reaction, as is shown here. Recalling that the difference between them is also two neutrons, which is rooted in the target nucleus, we can say that this is a 3N reaction and this is a 5N reaction. This characteristic applies to the isotope with a mass of 287 of the 114th element. In this way, as we move up the steps, by changing the energy and changing the number of neutrons in the target, we can draw up a graph that can uniquely determine and identify the mass and charge of each reaction product. Let us also keep in mind that when we are talking about an even-numbered isotope, these are short chains. And when we are talking about an odd-numbered isotope, these are long chains, even very long chains. And this type of decay verifies the correct choice or correct identification of the nucleus.